Hello everyone, Reginald Scott here and welcome to this video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about this, which is the Lightspeed T1 SL Titanium Performance Road Bike in rim brake. And I'm going to be explaining to you why this is the world's best bicycle and a bit of a call to action really, why no one is ever going to make one better than this, including Lightspeed, okay? because Lightspeed have just decided that they're going to discontinue this bike, that whatever they've got left in stock is the last of it, and they're never going to make a rim brake version of this kind of bike ever again. They're only going to go to disc now. So if you want the world's best bike, I would say hurry up, go to the Lightspeed website and buy one. I've got this one in size XS in my store if you want this one. Built up like this with Ultegra, by the way, you don't have to take these parts, you could just take the frame and the fork if you want, but built up in Ultegra R8000, this bike is 6.8 kilos without pedals. So it's right on the UCI weight limit for a titanium road bike in Ultegra. So drop this down to Dura Ace or bump it up to Dura Ace or Shram Red and you've got a UCI illegal bike. That's how good this thing is. And it's not even fully upgraded as well. Like you could lighten a lot of stuff on here. But this is a phenomenal bike. It's the world's best bike. I keep saying that, but it's true. Lightspeed are going to stop making it, which is insane. Um, if you want one or you want this one, top tube, 50 centimeters excess, let me know. If not, get your ass to the Lightspeed website and buy one before it's too late. Right, on with the video. Why is this the world's best performance road bike? And I wanna be very specific about that. It's not the world's best gravel bike, or it's not the world's best shopping bike, or not the world's best tandem. It's the world's best performance road bike. And I'll explain why. All right, folks, here is my argument. The first part is going to be me explaining why titanium is the best choice for a bicycle frame as a material what makes it superior to all other bicycle frame materials if i can do that then logically the world's best bike has to be made out of titanium next i'm going to move on to talking about why lightspeed are the world's best titanium bicycle manufacturer if we're looking for the world's best bike and it's made of titanium we obviously want the world's best manufacturer manipulating that titanium into a bicycle. So I have plenty of evidence to discuss on that topic. And then finally, I'm going to look at the individual features which make the T1SL special, what make it unique, what make it better than all other potential contenders for the top spot with regards to titanium bikes or any bike for that matter. So once I've done all that, I think I will have conclusively proved why the T1SL by Lightspeed is the world's best performance road bike. Right, let's get on with it, part one. Okay, so this is how I'm going to address the first part of the argument. What I've done is I've made this chart, and this is a bit of a visual representation to allow you to understand what I mean when I say that titanium is the best material to make a bike frame out of, because it possesses a lot more beneficial qualities than other frame materials. So if you look at the chart across the bottom, you'll see it says steel, aluminium, titanium, and carbon. So those are the top four most common frame materials. And then at the top of the chart, you can see the scoring in total for each category. So steel got six, uh, aluminium got five, titanium got eight, and carbon fiber was the last with four. Now, I'm going to go, as I say, I'm going to go through each one of these in turn and explain my reasoning behind them. So let's start off at the bottom of the chart and work our way up. So at the bottom, you have environmental. And the way I did the point scoring was this. If a particular frame material is known to be the best at something, then I gave it one point. If it can do it or it's not really known for it, but it is used for that, then I gave it half a point. And if it's really not known as being or having that quality, then I gave it zero points. OK, so that's how I did the point scoring. So for environmental, that basically addresses how good for the environment is the material and how much damage does it do to the environment to produce it into a bike frame. Now, this was quite a difficult one. Now, titanium, as you can see, got one point and that was a clear winner. And the reason why titanium got one point was because titanium doesn't age 
and it doesn't degrade over time. They say a titanium bike is a bike for life. So the way I look at it is if you buy a titanium bike, you never need to buy that bike again. Whereas if you have a material that degrades over time, you will need to buy that bicycle frame again at some point in your life. And therefore it means more pollution to manufacture another bicycle, right? So I gave it one point for that. I also gave it one point because titanium is non-toxic. Um, so, you know, it, even if you were to bury it in the ground, because it doesn't rust, it doesn't corrode and it's non-toxic, it's not harmful to the environment. Um, and I also gave it that one point because, because it doesn't break down over time, um, it can be easily recycled into other goods. So if you were to take your titanium frame to a scrap dealer, he will give you money for that frame because it's it's literally worth something. It has a value uh, for scrap. Um, so basically, the, those are the, the key factors. Now, steel and aluminium could have got one point, I think, but I, I, I lowered them just slightly for the reason that both steel and aluminium do corrode. So steel oxidizes, as does aluminium, uh, steel rusts and aluminium corrodes. And over time, in theory, if you neglect the frame or you don't look after the frame, you might need to buy a new one. The other issue with aluminium is that you get something called micro fractures. So micro fractures uh, in the frame material are due to stress. Titanium is extremely resistant to cyclical stress and steel is pretty resistant to cyclical stress as well. So that is why I downgraded steel and aluminium. They're both quite recyclable, so that's good. Um, and carbon got zero because it's not recyclable. Um, it is toxic, like the manufacturer of carbon fiber produces pollutants that are quite dangerous to your health. Um, and also carbon fiber produces 40% more pollutants. So if you were to make a steel, aluminium or titanium frame, it will be 40% less polluting than making a carbon frame. The other thing about carbon is it does break down over time. So if you know you build a carbon frame, um, you will eventually have to replace it. So for me, and the fact that it's non-recyclable, it gets zero points. The next category is comfort, and steel is well renowned for being a comfortable material. Uh, the vast majority of steel bikes are very comfortable, not all, but most of them. Um, and if you're looking for a touring bike or an endurance bike or just an everyday bike, steel is a phenomenally good choice in that department. Aluminium I gave no points because I've never ridden an aluminium bike that I would call plush or comfortable. I've ridden some fantastic aluminium bikes in the 20 years plus I've been riding road bikes, but certainly never come across one I would consider for a long distance bike. Um, great crit bikes, great fast and lightweight bikes, but not necessarily comfortable. Titanium, equal to that of steel, if not slightly better in some circumstances. Um, I've never ridden a titanium bike that I didn't like the comfort of, uh, whether it be a, a long distance bike or a performance bike like the T1SL, they're all incredibly comfortable. I've ridden my T1SL in fact over 200 kilometers in a single day, and I've suffered zero fatigue and zero pain, which is more than I can say for the guys who are riding with me on carbon and aluminium bikes. They could barely stand after the 200 kilometers. So, and I'm not fitter than those guys, and I wasn't younger than many of them as well. So I put it down to the frame for sure. Um, carbon, uh, some can be comfortable, but in general, I, I don't find carbon to be that comfortable. People talk about the, the vibration dampening of carbon fiber. Um, I tend to find that on my light speed bike, the place that vibrates the most is the front end, which has a carbon fork. And it's a very slender carbon fork as well. So um, does carbon make the ride more comfortable? Possibly more than aluminium. So I gave it half a point. So the next section is maintenance. And with steel and aluminium, you do need to maintain the frames. You need to make sure that the paint is in good condition because if any water or air gets towards the raw material underneath the paint, uh, it can cause quite severe corrosion, especially with aluminium bikes. Any salt or water that gets underneath the paint, you'll start to see your paint 
peeling away and all this white powder everywhere. Um, the steel also can rust, so it's also advisable to coat the inside of the frame with something to prevent that from happening. So those do need maintenance. Same with carbon fiber. Carbon fiber needs to remain painted and coated with something to protect the frame from UV light, which breaks down the polymer that holds the fibers together. Uh, you also need to maintain the fibers and prevent water incursion from getting in there. Um, and obviously anything that touches the frame that's made of metal, whether it be aluminium rivets or steel screws or aluminium bottom brackets and seat posts, you need to really maintain those as well. Make sure there's a good coating of grease or something around them so as to prevent galvanic corrosion. Whereas titanium, uh, it's pretty much maintenance free. If you don't care about scratches on your frame, then you don't have to do anything with it pretty much. You don't even have to clean it in theory because it doesn't corrode or rust it's very chemical resistant um, it's resistant to salt and water and sweat so it's basically a, a no maintenance frame you obviously you know you can polish it with WD-40 and a scouring pad and a bit of kitchen paper which is the easiest way to do it in my opinion um, but yeah that's fairly simple and it's not necessary so there you go titanium gets another point for that because it is so low maintenance the next section is versatility and clearly steel and titanium are the kings of versatility. Uh, you can pretty much do anything on a steel bike, you can race a steel bike, you can tour on a steel bike, you can do gravel on a steel bike. It's a fantastically versatile bike to, to do everything on, it's strong, it's comfortable, it's durable. Um, same for titanium, only titanium has the other advantage of course of not being painted so you don't even have to worry about panniers or bags slapping against the frame and damaging your, your nice paint job. Um, doesn't happen with titanium because you don't have a paint job. Uh, so I would say titanium is even more versatile, of course titanium is quite lightweight so you know it can be used to make a lightweight climbing bike whereas steel you can make a lightweight bike out of it but it's not necessarily your first choice. Um, aluminium and carbon fiber can do a lot of different jobs and a lot of different roles, but there are certain things you wouldn't choose an aluminium bike for or a carbon bike for if you had the chance. Um, for example, I wouldn't choose an aluminium bike as a touring bike just because they're not that comfortable. And I wouldn't choose a carbon bike as a gravel bike or as um, a commuting bike because they're just not hardy enough. They're too delicate and their frame can be too easily damaged. Now we come on to aerodynamics, and this was a tricky one. Um, I gave steel zero for aerodynamics because, generally speaking, most steel frames are fairly traditional in their design. Um, I don't recall personally seeing any aerodynamic steel frames. Maybe there were some around in the 70s, but... Um, they weren't that particularly aerodynamic so I'll give them a zero for steel on that one um, aluminium the reason I gave that a one is because Felipe Garner's uh, bike is our record bike is basically aluminium it's made a variety of things I think scagnium vanadium aluminium all sorts of stuff 3d printed together um, and that is the world's fastest bike right now and it's extremely aerodynamic so I gave aluminium one because you can get some very aerodynamic aluminium bikes. I was um, a little bit hard on titanium in this one. I gave it a, a half a point. There are some very aerodynamic titanium bikes and as 3D printing improves I'm sure we're going to see more and more aerodynamic titanium frames but again generally speaking most titanium frames don't tend to be very aerodynamic. Um, carbon fiber, yep they are mostly aerodynamic frames now and if you want something like a TT bike it's probably going to be uh, carbon fiber nowadays so I gave that a one as well. Okay so I've got longevity and I guess it's similar to durability environmental and maintenance in the sense that a lot of the points I've made already go into the longevity argument. Uh, generally speaking people consider steel frames to be a frame that you will have for a very long time. Although they can rust, that rusting process would take you absolutely decades to be of any problem. Uh, they can be repaired quite easily, steel bikes, and yeah they just generally last a really long time. Uh, aluminium, 
only got half a point because of the micro fractures that you get in aluminium frames so they do have a lifetime and eventually they do fail I've had a, a couple of aluminium bikes fail on me while riding in fact which was quite interesting um, and then titanium as long as the welds are good when they're originally done uh, as long as the manufacturer of the bike frame is good it should last forever and then carbon fiber similar to aluminium you know if you look after it it should last a really long time but there are failings of the material which mean that generally speaking unless it's in a museum it's not going to last forever so i gave that half a point as well next on to durability i don't think there's any argument here about steel being durable it's an incredibly durable material hence we make skyscrapers and bridges out of it and tanks um yep yeah, very durable aluminium a little bit less durable uh, it can be a very hardy material especially when it's built up thick uh, it can make a decent mountain bike for example but it can still bend and dent if you crash um, some of the lighter weight aluminium frames are actually really easy to bend if you clamp the top tube for example you can basically basically collapse it very easily uh, titanium that is incredibly durable we use it for a lot of military hardware as well you know it's very heat resistant and stress resistant um, it's wear resistant it's why you know the Americans used it to build the SR 71 and the is it the A12 as well the fastest uh, manned jet aircraft ever produced because it was the only material that could withstand the extreme heats and pressures of high altitude high speed flight um, and then carbon fiber I think the last word you would associate with carbon fiber is durable it's the least durable material by far uh, your bike blows over outside the coffee shop and you've basically snapped a chainstay uh, so let's have a look at a couple of videos giving examples of titanium's durability just to hammer home the point. I've got a couple of tubes to show you the example of titanium's true strength and that is in toughness. Carbon fiber. This carbon tube would be the, a great example of a uh, down tube or seat tube, quite heavy gauge. Now. A beefy aluminum down tube, mountain bike. A typical aerospace unenhanced titanium tube. This is just what we begin with. Amazing, eh? <laughs> Here we go. 3D printed titanium Iron Man armor versus 45 caliber bullet. Three, two, one. Right there, that's a 45 caliber bullet hit, and it hasn't even left a significant mark. That is bulletproof armor <laughs> moving on to weight i gave a zero for steel because it is the heaviest of all the frame materials um and although you can build up a steel bike to be very light if you've got a big enough budget um it's never going to be as light as another bike with the same components in a different material Aluminium, yep, aluminium is an incredibly lightweight material. Obviously, you're limited by how thin you can make the tubes because it does start to get quite weak if you make the tubes too thin. Carbon fiber is still the king of lightweight. If you're looking to make the ultimate weight weenie build, you would, of course, go for a carbon fiber frame and sand all the uh, paint off it and things like that, you know, all that jazz. Um, but my titanium bike, this one here, <laughs> it's not far behind. Um, this isn't really a full weight weenie build. I have gone for some very light components, for example, like SRAM Red Mechanical and some carbon wheels. But I've opted for things like a titanium seat post, which is heavier than carbon fiber because I wanted the strength of a titanium seat post and the comfort of a titanium seat post. So there is, there is places on this bike where I could make the bike considerably lighter if I wanted to. Um, but it's strong 
and it comes in at 6.39 kilos, so well below the UCI limit. Like I say, it's a strong and safe frame. So unlike you know your full-on carbon fiber weight weenie builds where there's a little part of your brain when you get on those things that says, hmm, am I sure this thing's gonna last the whole ride? <laughs> you don't have to worry like that when you're riding a titanium bike because they are incredibly strong and reliable. Now on to the final section, which is cost slash value. Um, how much you pay and how much you get. And what you notice about this section is carbon fiber got zero, but all the others got one. Now let me explain why that is. So first off, steel. For the amount you pay for a steel frame, you get an incredibly versatile bike. You get a hell of a lot of bike for the money. And for, say, the same cost as a carbon frame, you can end up with a custom steel frame, which is achingly gorgeous to look at and uh, will last you a lifetime and will basically be able to do anything that you want to do on it. Aluminium, although it doesn't long last as long as steel um, and it's not quite as versatile as steel, again, you get a hell of a lot of bike for the cost and aluminium is the cheapest of all the frame materials so if you look down the aluminium chart you see it's pretty good at most things and it excels in some areas as well you come over to titanium and you get literally the best of all the categories pretty much and although the cost is high again around the price of a carbon fiber frame sometimes a little bit less you get one hell of a bike that's going to last you a lifetime and is going to be incredibly versatile and do everything you need it to do. Then we come on to carbon fiber. The first thing is that it's the most expensive frame material, okay? So the cost is high. Now, is it worth the cost? If you look down the chart, you can clearly see that carbon fiber is not doing that well. It's doing slightly less well than aluminium. So what you're doing when you buy a carbon fiber bike is you're sacrificing a lot of really important qualities that go to make up a bike in exchange for high performance in a couple of small areas in this case aerodynamics and weight now we already know that you can get aerodynamic bikes in other materials and we already know you can get lightweight bikes in other materials as well you can have a tie or alley bike that is just as stiff and as light as a carbon bike for much less money. The other thing about carbon is it doesn't last. You're buying a depreciating item. It's something that over time is going to age. Most of my customers change their carbon bikes every three or four years because they just don't last that long. They just get beaten to all hell. They get chipped, they get cracked, they get you know rusted bolts stuck in them, seat posts jammed in them, and they just fail. Um, and so they need replacing, they need changing. And so when you invest a large amount of money in a carbon bike frame, you're going to lose that money eventually. Whereas the same cannot be said for steel and titanium. You get value for money. And the final thing is that even though carbon fiber is so expensive to buy, it's one of the cheapest materials to buy in rolls and it's one of the cheapest and most cost-effective materials for the manufacturer. That is why manufacturers love carbon fiber. You can make carbon fiber frames very cheaply, very quickly, and with very limited skill once the molds are made. The individual workers in the factories don't actually have any significant skill in making those bikes. The skill comes from the engineers who design the molds. Um, so you can actually mass produce carbon fiber frames very, very cheaply and then sell them at exorbitant prices. So on every level, carbon fiber is not worth the money. And when you consider that, for example, a specialized S-Works SL7 tarmac will cost you more than a Lightspeed T1 SL. And the Lightspeed TS T1 SL is handmade in America by skilled craftsmen who've been doing it for 37 years and have trained for many years to be able to weld that frame together correctly. And you compare that with the S-Works Tarmac SL7 that is mass produced in a factory in China, you begin to understand that you're being cheated and that it's all about marketing when it comes to carbon fiber. 
Alright folks, so now I'm going to explain why Lightspeed is the best titanium bike manufacturer in the world. The first reason is their experience. They've got more experience than anybody else in the world at making titanium bikes, over 36 years of experience. And there's only one company that comes close to them, and that's Linsky. And actually Linsky started the Lightspeed brand many years ago. but. For some reason, Linsky decided to sell the Lightspeed brand off and all the talent and all the engineering and all the experience went with Lightspeed when they were sold off. And then later when cycling became more popular, Linsky tried to get back in the game. And that's why now Linsky are producing titanium bikes again. But they've lost all that experience and they were out of the game for many years. Whereas Lightspeed continued with many of the same staff many of the same engineers and withheld all that experience. Next is Lightspeed's technology and history of innovation. They've always been at the cutting edge of titanium innovation and they've always been able to produce more complex tube shapes than other manufacturers, which means they can get more out of each frame with regards to weight, stiffness and compliance than other manufacturers can. If you look at a normal titanium bike made by somebody else, like for example Moots, all the tubes tend to be very straight gauge round tubes, whereas with Lightspeed they are really complex and they have this ability to really change the shape of the tubes to a level that other companies simply can't. They also use much more difficult grades of titanium, for example the top tube of the T1SL is made out of 6.4 titanium, which is a much harder grade of titanium that again most companies won't even touch because they simply don't know how to manipulate that level of titanium. Um, another thing is the kind of people that have ridden for Lightspeed and their history of tour wins. So Lightspeed have been ridden by some of the greatest names. Robbie McEwen, Eddie Merckx, Lance Armstrong, Tom Boonen, um, Greg LeMond, some of the most influential cyclists in history. And not just that, but Lightspeed also built these guys bikes and many of the titanium bikes that were then produced by companies under those brand names were made by Lightspeed. In fact, Lightspeed have made bikes for everyone from Trek to De Rosa, from Bianchi to Colnago. Anything that was made in titanium, Lightspeed was making it and it was being rebranded under different names. So some of the greatest bikes in history and some of the greatest riders in history. Also, no other titanium cycling brand can claim Tour de France wins. Lightspeed are the only company that make titanium bikes in history that have Tour de France wins and they have multiple Tour de France wins. The next claim to fame of Lightspeed as a bicycle manufacturer is they're the only one in history that's ever made anything that then got sent into space. The titanium legs on the Mars rover Curiosity were actually manufactured by Lightspeed. It's breathtaking to think about anything that, that leaves our planet. And, uh, and goes to space. This is the rover Curiosity landing on Mars this morning. If you take a close look, you can see these eight titanium legs connecting the onboard laboratory to the wheels. These are the legs that reach out to the wheels of the vehicle. Brad Devaney designed the two to three foot pieces using a special technique and strong but flexible material. <laughs> all right here in the Uruwa factory. The machines here are used to forming titanium into parts like this for the bike frame. But for this project, they had to make these heavier and a different shape. The American Bicycle Group is known for its lightweight, high-tech frames. And when the Jet Propulsion Laboratory was designing the rover in California, they thought of this local company and its success with titanium in the biking world. And the final factor which amazes me about Lightspeed as a company is that despite all the claims to fame that they have, all the accolades, all the experience and all the skill they have in making the most advanced titanium bike frames on the planet, they're not expensive. Like I said before, their most expensive frames cost less than carbon frames made in China. Their titanium bikes are cheaper than that of Moots, for example. Their, titanium, their top end titanium bikes 
are cheaper than the bespoke kind of bikes that you get from people like Legend. Um, so you can get the most advanced and the lightest titanium bike frames in the world and you don't have to pay bespoke titanium prices. So on to the final section which is discussing why the T1 SL is better than all other titanium bikes on the market. So if you check the chain stays on this light speed what you see is two grades of titanium. One is the 3AL and 2.5V which is aluminium and vanadium mix and that is the most common type of titanium used in bicycle frame manufacture. It's what the vast majority of bicycle frames are made out of when they're made of titanium. But Lightspeed also used the 6.4 um, grade of titanium which is a much harder tougher type of titanium. Most of the companies won't even touch it because it is so hard to manipulate and it makes their bikes stronger and lighter than the competition. Uh, the top tube of the T1 SL is made of that much stronger and lighter titanium. Um, and then they're also triple buttered. Now butting is a process of removing material from the inside of the tubes to make them thinner, uh, to reduce weight and to do it in a way that doesn't cause any detriment to the performance of the tube. And light speed are kind of unique that they do triple butting. Uh, most manufacturers only do single, some very rarely like the, uh, the Nemo TIG do double, uh, but Lightspeed are doing triple, which is incredibly rare. Lightspeed also butt their head tubes and their bottom bracket shells, which again is quite unique. Not many manufacturers actually do that. Uh, most bottom bracket shells on most metal bikes are just straight gauge tubes whereas you can see that both the outside and the inside of this titanium bottom bracket have been buttered in order to reduce weight but maintain the stiffness of the bottom bracket section. Um, another thing about these bottom brackets is that they are basically foolproof uh, because they are precision cut rather than molded so bottom brackets on carbon bikes are molded and that is why a lot of them are misshapen whereas these titanium bottom brackets on the T1 SL and other light speed bikes are machined with a CNC or a lathe and so you get a perfect fit. Now light speed do offer a T47 uh, bottom bracket as well so you can go threaded but honestly I built like 15 or 16 of these bikes with the press fit and we've had no issues at all uh, because when your bottom bracket shell is perfect like this you don't get creaking no matter what kind of bottom bracket system you use. The Lightspeed T1 SL also comes with options available for fully electronic frames, so no cable guides if that's what you're after. If you do go for the mechanical frame, it does have a very traditional cable setup, which I actually prefer because, as I've stated in a previous video, there are seven advantages to having your cables on the outside. If you want to know those advantages, go check that video out. And then the final and probably the most important advantage of the Lightspeed T1 SL is the weight. It is the world's lightest titanium bicycle frame. Um, in the smaller sizes, it's 950 grams, and my large size frame is 1,100 grams, so well within the range of lightweight carbon fiber bikes. Um, basically, Lightspeed are discontinuing this frame, so there will never be a lighter bike than this in titanium, as far as I'm aware, because they're all switching over to the Devil Dork discs and you know the devil dot discs are significantly heavier and always will be significantly heavier than these gorgeous rim brake bikes so unfortunately this is probably going to be the world's lightest titanium bike ever until perhaps maybe 3d printing can make one lighter but i doubt it's possible simply because the addition of disc brakes and with that, I basically summed up the video. I've presented all my evidence. I've told you why titanium is the best frame material. It's the most logical choice for a frame material. I've explained to you why Lightspeed is the best titanium bike manufacturer in the world. And I've explained to you what makes the T1 SL special. Um, I just want to end this video with a clip from somebody else's YouTube video. I just thought it would be nice to hear a second opinion on the T1 SL from another experienced bike shop owner and rider. So here we go uh, from Cycle Right in the UK. 
Neil had ridden this bike and he came back and he said, wow, okay, this is something special. So you have a bike here that handles like one of your favorite brands. So most people would agree something like a Colnago C-Series, specifically 6064, is whoa, arguably one of the finest handling bikes you can ride. And this feels very much like that to ride in terms of its, the way it handles, the way it steers, the comfort level and the stiffness. You know, if you blindfolded yourself, you'd struggle to tell the difference. So, you know, comfortable, light, handles, you know, could be your, the only bike you ever need. And Very high accolade yeah. compared to a CC6, uh, C series of a Colnago. Yeah. And one of the things about this bike is that your thoughts are as incredible as the comfort. Oh, comfort is amazing. Um, particularly the back end of it, you know, the front end of a bike now, these are uh, carbon forks. So you would expect it to have some compliance and ride a bit from the front end like a traditional carbon bike. But the back end rides like a, a steel bike. Oh, it, it reminds me of riding, when I was a kid, my old rally record, which rode beautifully, weighed a ton, but you know, rode amazingly well. It's just got that kind of feel, that similar feel to a steel bike, but you've got the weight advantage of, of a, a carbon bike in a material that's not in any way, shape or form delicate. So we've convinced Mr. Cypher right that he needs a titanium bike. I do. <laughs> Alright folks, thanks for watching. If you are interested in getting your hands on the world's best bicycle frame in size XS, that's a 50 centimeter top tube, I do have one in the shop. Uh, you can choose your specifications and parts with it, you can just get the frame if you want or take all the parts, up to you. Uh, but if you want it, let me know. And uh, apart from that, ride safe everyone.